Hey everybody, welcome to 10 Minute Tuesday. If you are new here, my name is Kristana and I am a furniture artist. Every Tuesday I go over something kind of business-like. Sometimes I, you know, we talk about things, get a little bit, not personal, we just talk about other things in this business, maybe how to find inspiration and how to step outside of your, step outside of your comfort zone. But today, I want to give you something that will hopefully help your business and help you sell more furniture. So, staging, okay? I cannot stress to you enough how important it is to stage. And I have seen people out there in the groups that are like, I've never staged a piece and I sell all my pieces. That's great. But if you are the kind of person who wants to get paid for what you're, the work you put in, staging it and presenting your final product makes all the difference in someone paying you $200 for a buffet or $700 for a buffet. And I'm going to tell you why. So first of all, let's start our 10 minute timer. And I'm also going to give you guys some tips. So 10 minute timer. I always do this literally every time I do this, let's start our timer. I'll just start talking and then I'll forget and then it'll be 20 minute Tuesday and then it'll be 30 minute Tuesday and then it'll be 40 minute Tuesday if we don't stop. So 10 minutes on the clock. Boom, 10 minutes. Okay, so I want, first of all, I'm gonna tell you what's right behind me. This is my staging wall. Let me show you where I stage first before we really get into this. This, ladies and gentlemen, is my staging wall. Also known as this is my dining room. Okay, so this is my dining room. This is where I do all my YouTube videos. This is where I do my staging, set so a little work area there. I do have a room downstairs that has all of my paint, but that is my staging wall. Why am I showing this to you? I am showing you that wall because I want you to know that you don't have to have just a specific place for staging. You can use any wall in your own house. Some of you guys don't have room to have a staging area. Some of you live in apartments. You just use one of the walls that you have. Use what you have. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I do have to move stuff around quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> if you can tell that raspberry hutch is now missing because I put it downstairs in my paint room. The reason why is because I was constantly having to move it every single time that I staged and I just thought, you know what, it's easier to just move it. I love it, obviously I'm gonna keep it, but for right now, it just makes sense for me to just get it out of here. So now I have a nice clean wall when I can do my YouTube videos, stage, all that stuff. Now, if you do have an area, let's say in your basement or your garage or something like that, you can go to the hardware store and they have panels and you can do like a faux panel for your floor, maybe if you've got carpet or something in there and you can put a faux panel up for the back if maybe your wall is not the color that you want. So there are other options that you can do. When I lived in my old house, I built a little wall. I put a faux panel, screwed it into the wall. Whoops. Screwed it into the wall. That was not our timer. <laughs> I have timers for everything. So I screwed it into the wall and then I used my concrete floor. If the concrete floor is not what you wanna do, you can always put, you know, fake, you can put a panel down, put some fake peel and stick, whatever. There's so many options. The reason why I'm telling you this is because it's very important for you to stage your final product. And the reason why is because people are visual and they cannot always visualize your piece of furniture in their home. So your job does not end when you're done painting your piece. This is why I say that it's all a process. Finding the piece of furniture is a process. Finding a piece of furniture that's unique is a process. Figuring out what you wanna do with it is a process. Painting it's a process. Sealing it's a process you know, lugging it back and forth is part of the process. Staging and taking pictures is also part of the process. A lot of you guys have newer phones. You can absolutely use your cell phones for pictures. People do it all the time. I have a, um, actually I'll show you. So I have a DSLR camera that I use to take my pictures. I saved up for it. Obviously it's very loved. This thing, I've had it for, why? There we go. I've had it for a few years now <laughs> and it's worked great. So there's so many different options. Now, when you're staging, how do you pick colors? Bam, bam, bam. Color wheel, color wheel, color wheel. So 
invest in a color wheel. Not only will this help you pick colors for your pieces, this will help you pick colors for your staging as well. And I do have a full video on this color wheel and I will link it in the, descri the description below. I don't wanna go in to super crazy detail, but let's talk about, let's say that you painted a piece, hmm, what's something that people love? Oh, let's go with blue. Blue, blue, blue. All right, so if you guys can see, my little arrow right here is pointing to the blue, right? Okay, what is a complementary color? It is the color that complements the other color, which is straight across in the color wheel, which blue and orange are complementary, okay? This is the best color to complement blue. Not that it's the only color, but it's right across. So. Let's see, we've got our complementary colors. You've got the triad. What's a triad? The triad is the other colors that complement that color. So we've got blue, right? Well, over here, you've got yellow and you have red. So you could use red, you could use yellow, you could use orange in your staging. And what that does is it's appealing to the eye. So if you had this blue dresser and you used those colors, or let's say you just decided to use white, blue, and orange in your staging, that is going to catch somebody's eye, okay? So that is really important to understand the colors that you should be putting in your staging. Now let's talk about the themes of your staging. If you're trying to market a piece for a child, stage it that way. So if you're trying to market a bench, like the bench that I just did for a reading bench for a kid, put some kids' books up there. Put a little kid's pair of shoes down underneath. Um, you know, if you're, if you're staging a piece, maybe it's a dresser, but you really want to stage it as a buffet, stage it as a buffet. If you are, if you're gearing it towards an older crowd, you know, not, not kids, but somebody that is, you know, uh, in their own home and maybe they don't have kids or whatever, you know, maybe they want it as a, a, a piece in their room, stage it as if, okay. Or just so, right. Does that make sense? Stage it like where you would like for it to be. Also, for me, how I stay true to my brand is I do stage pieces as if they are in my own home. So when you see me staging pieces, that's how it looks in my house. It's a little bit messy right now, otherwise I would show you. But I have a wall full of baskets. I have colorful stuff all over. My house is full of color. So. That's the easiest way for me because sometimes it's a mental thing. Sometimes you're like, well, I don't know how to stage it. I stage it as if it's in my own home. Like if I were to buy that piece of furniture, how would I stage it in my house? That's what I do. And it really does help me kind of visualize. Also, I'm not sure if this is concrete or this is gospel, but threes. So they say, whoever they are, design school, whatever, if you guys are a um, interior designer, tell me if this is true or not, um, to use odd numbers. So let's say that you're gonna do vases and you're gonna put these vases on top of this dresser. You don't put two vases, you don't put four vases, you put either three or five vases. You, you stage in odd numbers. I don't always follow that. You guys can look at my stuff and see, I don't always follow that, but I also am a rule breaker, so it's fine. Also, when it comes to staging, I'm not saying you have to stage on a white wall, cause you don't, but I do, and I have staged on colorful walls before. But the reason why I stage on a neutral color wall is because that allows me to be a little bit more creative in the things that I stage with. So if I was staging on like a red wall, which don't do that. Okay, that, I'll tell you that right now. Do not stage on a red wall. You want to stage on a wall that is not going to take away from your piece. And if you are a colorful, a colorful person and you're not sure if you're going to paint yellow or red or blue or whatever from week to week, using a more neutral wall is better for you. Now, if you're farmhouse and you know that you're always going to paint in neutral colors, putting it on, you know, even like a navy blue wall, stuff like that is not always a bad idea. So as long as you know what your style is. For me, I don't know what I'm gonna do from one week to the next. So I stage on my white wall because that allows me to use different colors in my staging. And 
you want to be really careful of not to clutter it. You want to be careful of when you're staging to not take away from the piece. You want to enhance it. You want someone who's scrolling to stop. You want it to be a scroll stopper, stop them. So, you know, maybe those red vases stop them and then they look at all the rest of it. So staging one shows that you're a professional and that you mean business when you're putting your stuff out there. So again, I have seen it. I, I never stage anything and I sell it. And if you're one of those people, I'm sorry, but staging is the difference between $200 to $700. Hands down, it's a fact. True. I've been in this business for long enough to know. Before, when I used to not stage versus now, the way that you present yourself, when you present yourself as a professional, as a serious business, people take you serious and that goes into your staging. Also, you, most people who are buying your stuff are not creatives. They're not, they're not going to go out and paint their own pieces. Eventually people end up doing it, but they're looking to you to style them, to style their house. And that goes with staging as well. I cannot tell you how many times I've had someone say, can I buy your staging stuff too? And of course I tell them where to get it. Now we're almost up. We got five seconds left. What if you don't have all the staging things? You can use the stuff in your house. Use your own decor. Also, if you're in the States, Hobby Lobby, if you, if you go there every other week, they've got things 40% off. You can look on Amazon. You can go, go to thrift stores and, and in, instead of just finding furniture, go to thrift stores and find things to, to buy for your staging. And let's say that you find a white vase, but you want it pink, paint it. So get creative when it comes to staging, but understand that staging really will set you apart. If you've got five furniture, flippers, artists, painters, whatever you want to call yourself in your area, and you are the only one that's actually taking the time to stage your pieces and really put in that extra work, I guarantee you, you will stand out. So that's it. I hope that was helpful. Maybe some people don't want to stage. It's fine. I don't always like, I don't always want to stage, but I, it's fun to me. It's like, it's fun to kind of figure it out. And here's another tip for you. When you're staging, don't just go with the first stuff you do. Stage it, step back as if you were taking the picture, really look at the piece. And, and if anything kind of pops out and it's taking away from the piece, move it around, move things around, take pictures after you stage, take pictures and look at the pictures and see how they make you feel. Ask someone around you. I often go to my husband and I say, does this look good right here? So ask for help. Take the picture. There's plenty of face group, Facebook groups out there as well that help with staging and things like that. Or if you don't want to be in a face group, Facebook group, gosh, I can't talk today. If you don't want to be in a Facebook group, find a someone that you trust that you can send pictures to that will give you suggestions. But you need to be open to constructive criticism or someone saying, eh, you should probably use this for staging, okay? Um, so anyways, I hope that was helpful. If you're not staging, you better get out there and start staging. That's it. I hope this 10 Minute Tuesday helped you guys and I will see you next Tuesday. I have a video coming out this week as well on furniture, so you know. Also, what I'm gonna do here really quick, the piece that I'm working on this, this week, I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture of it not staged versus a picture of it staged and kind of show you the, the, the difference. And you guys tell me in the comments what you think. Did it make a difference having it staged versus not staged? Did you look at it different? Could you visualize it in your room or your house? You tell me. As always, make sure you subscribe and I will see you guys later. Bye.